Well, I, I, I did not um, be, I, I didn't further investigate the cause of this, um, of why there is, there's upward motion in the eye at this time. Um, so what you're saying, it could, it could be correct. Uh, just this way and this way, right? And actually the cause might be the instrument here mm -hmm. and it causes this way. So, but uh, I, I myself, I just started looking yeah. at in my simulation, yeah. so I'm not sure yeah. about my idea. And, and I don't know, I should say like this is, this is one simulation and, and I'm not sure how general this is. Like mm -hmm. this, maybe this is a common characteristic, maybe it just happens occasionally. Um, I think as far as I know, there, there are very few studies that have actually looked at the, the time variation of the, mm -hmm. of, the, of the mean vertical motion in the eye. Um, because you need, in order to do this, you need um, to save high frequency output of maybe, this is from six minute output, and if you, if you use anything coarser than that, you get aliasing of, of uh, high frequency right, right. gravity waves, um, and you won't capture the, the you'll, you can get just wrong average vertical motion. So I think it, it would be really nice to, to see more studies that look at the, the structure of the vertical motion in the eye um, to see how, whether, whether this picture is, is, is common or, or if there's a variation from storm to storm. Yeah, it is very interesting. If there, this upward motion causes a crowd evolution mm -hmm. in the middle troposphere, I think the Joblak analysis have a big problem uh, mm -hmm. during the rapid intensification. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you because said if there's the, clouds uh, in the eye, I, I yeah. got covered by yeah. the middle troposphere. I, I suspect my, my guess is there's not clouds there. Um, it's hard to say because this is still a weak time when um, the eye is starting to dry. So, yeah, that's something. I, I still have the the simulation. I could look at that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that'll that would be interesting. Like I said, I think my guess is there's no clouds there, but I don't know. Um, Back. Um, yeah, and so I yeah I realize like this this analysis is there's a lot here and it can be confusing. So if anything is unclear, just ask. Um, uh, maybe there are only about heating, so maybe it's no clock. Yeah, well, there's very there's some weak. Yeah, it's a little bit noisy there. It's, there there's very weak diabetic. Yeah, so I guess at some yeah, times there the is a cloud, mm -hmm. but whether whether there whether that's because you could just have a, a, a small cloud locally, and then in the average it's and there. Even but, it's a thin cloud, but yeah. uh, it's significantly affect the uh, visible and the uh, infrared image of the satellite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, Although it's hard because like this region here where there's cloud that's closer to the eye wall and like the so if we look the region of, of vertical motion of rising vertical motion is about seven kilometers and that's sort of not where the diabetic heating is. So yeah, it's a little bit complicated. I'll have to actually look at the cloud field itself to really tell. Um, so secondary circulation within. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Mm. and uh, mm. cloud uh, evolution of yes. thin cloud. Yes, mm. So yeah. you were but arguing it masks the eye. Mm. 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 So were you yeah. saying there should be uh, there should be outflow from the eye into the eye wall there? Yeah. So you can sort of see that here. So this is would be the everything inside here. This is weak outflow. Oh. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. um, you have to. I'd have to like contour differently to really see yeah. the structure in the eye. Because the eye wall is so much stronger yeah, outflow. I myself thought it well, it comes from the element to the eye wall region, but the discussion here indicates that diabetic heating mm. can be another, you know, uh, the condensation to, to explain yeah. this kind of mm -hmm. saturation. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's very yeah. interesting. Mm. Yeah, interesting. And it's it can be tricky because the heating is going to influence the circulation, but the yeah. circulation is mm. also influencing the heating. Mm. Right. So. Mm. Um, yeah, so the, the, the key point of this is that um, is, is that you can you can still get warming even if you had a region of, of, of ascending motion. Um, and you see that we do have warming from advection, so why do we have warming from advection if the mean vertical advection is a negative tendency? And the reason in this simulation of this time is it's the contribution from the eddy radial advection. Um, bringing warm air into the eye um, uh, laterally. For, um, 
and I'll, I'll have a slide in a moment to sort of conceptually uh, illustrate that because it's kind of a, a I, at least I find it a difficult concept to kind of visualize, so I'll, I'll show that in a moment. But yeah, the point is that at this time, there's uh, eddy radial tendencies that lead to warming of the eye that overwhelm the cooling tendency on potential yeah, temperature so for mean vertical looking ejection. at this kind of feature, right? What? I myself is looking at this kind oh, of yeah? feature, eddy, you know, yeah. uh, mixing between eye and eye wall region, horizontal period. Yes. Usually people think about the uh, inner eye wall and eye region, this kind of particle in yeah. the radial situations, mm -hmm. but uh, instead, of that idea, I myself think uh, some uh, interactions between you know horizontal uh, radial theory, radial uh, interaction mm -hmm. between eye and eye region. Yes, that is very common in my situation. Yeah, did you did you find it more at the um, the developing stage or or at um, later? Actually, just basically I look at the mature stage, but um, maybe I will check it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so finally, yeah, the eddy vertical evection. There's a lot going on in the eye wall, but not much in the eye. So the eddy vertical evection at this time is not too important for the structure of the temperature or the potential temperature in the eye. Um, and uh, and yeah, and finally note, yeah, um, at this for this 12-hour period, we we have um, the largest warming. A potential temperature is actually at low levels at only two kilometers, but that's not where the the, the peak um, perturbation temperature actually ends up uh, forming. Uh, it'll be at, at, at mid levels. So uh, it's important to, to realize that um, if you look at just one period of the of the warming tendency, it doesn't necessarily correspond to the same level where your 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 time integrated peak warming is. So it, it can be, it's complicated. So if we now move on to the, the next 12 hour period, so this is 36 to 48 hours. Um, let's see our intensity evolution here. So now we're going um, uh, from a cat two to a cat three. So it's becoming a, a, a significant tropical cyclone. Um, and we're, we're getting uh, large warming at mid levels the, here. So looking at the budget, um, consistent with, with the time evolution of the warm core, uh, we get very large change in potential temperature concentrated at six kilometers here. Um, strongest at the center, um, but significant through the entire eye. And we're creating these large radial gradients of potential temperature from having more warming in the center than that being in the eye wall. Um, also note, so we have a, a from 10 to 12 kilometers, you have a minimum, and then above that, there's a, a, a this upper tropospheric maximum, and that's what's eventually uh, contributing to the, the secondary maximum in the in the warm core. Um, and then uh, we can see one reason why we're not getting a low-level warm core maximum is here the total change in potential temperature um, is now near zero at two kilometers and, and negative below. So from one period to the next, the tendency uh, at low levels completely changes. Um, <clears throat> if we look at, first looking at the, the total advective tendency, uh, as in the previous period, uh, the total advective tendency largely explains the distribution of the ch changes in potential temperature. We have advection leads to a maximum in warming uh, a maximum tendency at mid levels, and the total actual change in potential temperature is maximized then as well. And again, at upper levels, they correspond well to. Um, diabetic heating uh, is very large in the eye. Um, it's offset by by the vertical advection of potential temperature, uh, which is a negative tendency in in the eye wall, um, and and so these largely cancel, and so we get. We get warming in the eye wall, but it's, it's weak. You'll notice now we are getting large negative tendencies of diabetic heating. So this is a cooling region, these blue colors, right at the inner edge of the eye wall um, at the, and the outer edge of the eye. So this is coming from evaporation and melting. Um, and these tendencies can become very large. You'll, if you look at total advection, uh, there's, there's maximum in, in a warming tendency from total advection in these same regions. 
And what that is, is, is vertical advection. You have uh, very large um, uh, subsidence at just inside the, um, at the, the eye eye wall interface. Um, and well, I'll just skip ahead again to, to make that clear. So we're looking at this period here, um, and you start to get uh, concentrated descent on the edge of the eye eye wall. Um, that's where the strongest descent is. Mm -hmm. And it could be 10 to 20 centimeters per second. Um, but you don't get the largest warming there. If we look at the change in potential temperature, there's no maxima there. It's just uh, a, ne a, a negative radial gradient. And that's because the warming you would get from vertical evection is entirely offset uh, by the cooling you get from the, the microphysics from the evaporation. Um, in the eye, there's v very little heating of, or cooling of any kind. Um, so that's not important in the eye at this time. Um, and if you, if you look at the mean vertical evection in the eye, you're starting to get mid-level warming from descent in, in, in much of the eye at, uh, at mid-levels. Um, and so that somewhat corresponds with the, the total evection change. We still at this time have large eddy radial evection. So if we compare the two times, if we go back um, and now forward again, you have this, this is a persistent region, so from one period to the next, you're getting this, this tendency from the eddy radial evection. And so in the middle of rapid intensification here, you're getting warming from, from both processes at mid-levels. You have a small cooling tendency from mean vertical evection um, about, at about seven kilometers, but that region is, is, is a lot weaker than the previous time. Did, did you have a question? Sure. Oh. Um, the, the PBL term is, uh, is, is larger, but it's only significant in the eye wall still. We have some negative tendencies in mid-levels in the eye wall. It's extremely large in the boundary layer. It's very important to the boundary layer. Um, but in the free atmosphere, and where in the eye and the warm core, it's, it's negligible. Uh, horizontal diffusion started, is starting to become bigger. If we, if we go back, from 24 to 36 hours, horizontal diffusion is negligible. Um, again, all of these have the same contours, same color scale. So it's negligible from 24 to 36 hours, but from 36 to 48 hours, you're starting to get um, negative tendencies from horizontal turbulent diffusion. And so effectively, the, the, because the eye wall is colder than the eye, and you have large horizontal gradients there, you're getting, you're getting parametrized mixing uh, uh, down gradient, and so you're cooling the eye and warming the eye wall. Um, but still, it's relatively small, and it isn't a large, and in the interior of the eye near the center, it's, it's still negligible. So this isn't an important contributor at this time. Mean radial evection is still very small in the eye. Um, Eddy vertical evection is small in most of the eye, and and again to, to emphasize, um, there's still there's a significant tendency from the eddy radial evection and, and warming the mid level eye, but the upper level warm core that's forming is is due entirely to to descent. Yeah. This one? Right. 
Oh, due to the decrease of pressure? Um, that contributes to it, but um, at two kilometers, so we're getting the strongest change here at two kilometers, um, and you're, you, you are you are getting some warm. It's hard to see here, but in this layer, you are getting uh, strong warming at two kilometers uh, here in the potential temperature field. And I, oh, sorry, this this is perturbation temperature. So you are you you are seeing the change in temperature itself. So it's not just the pressure change. You this this warming at um, in the low level I is is happening in the actual temperature field here. Like from 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 here to here. The temperature warms by about uh, two or three degrees. I think it is uh, due to uh, downward motion yeah. of uh, uh, inversion layer because there are low level inversion. Yes. Uh, in the cloud cloud layer and uh, cloud free area, and uh, due to the degrees in uh, pressure in the center and uh, uh, inversion layer can. And go downward. I, I think it, it is due to the strong uh, vertical uh, advection. Yeah, so you're getting, you are yes, getting, here, here. yeah, like here, like this is the, the descent, and so you do have uh, strong, uh, well, not strong, but significant descend, mean descent in the low level eye at this time, and that's, that's warming the, the actual temperature. Um, through and that subsidy through um, adiabatic compression. Uh, gradient of potential temperature is very strong in this area. Um, yes. Uh, so this is the, the mean static stability. Um, yeah, but the gradient and the, the gradient is actually it's the gradient is is, is not too strong at first. Mm -hmm. it, it's the subsidence itself that's making the gradient strong. Ah, yes, um, yes. And that'll further influence the the, the temperature mm -hmm. changes, mm -hmm. but basically because um, because we have this this region of of, of descent, and then below that, um, in the boundary layer, you, you don't you don't have much vertical motion. So you're 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 bringing theta surfaces down. Mm -hmm. From above, and then keeping them constant below, and then you're just bringing them closer and closer. So that's so, increasing the stability. So the initially, the the uh, vertical gradient is not so strong, but yeah, uh, it's the strength is, is yeah. getting and strong. And you can see this from by looking at uh, these consecutive periods. So this 24 to 36 hours, you do have a local maximum there, but it's not extremely not strong. Clear. But there's a, a very big increase in static stability yes. in, from the, between these two periods. Yeah, as you're strengthening the inversion, um, because you have subsidence above a region where there's either ascent or, 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 or weak vertical motion. Yes. It's so it's like the vertical gradient of the, the mm -hmm. subsidence yes. is, is changing the stability. I think I, I finished uh, this this middle period of rapid intensification. I just finished describing how you still have total advection is is the dominant contributor to the warming, and that's split between contributions from mean vertical advection and eddy radial advection. Mm -hmm. And in the eye, those are the two dominant terms. Mm -hmm. And then if we look at the final period. Um, uh, this isn't the end of intensification, but it's the final period that I'm examining here um, during the rapid intensification. And this is a period of, of very strong warming. Um, so we're, 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 the colors go beyond, the, the contours go beyond the color bar. So these are, I think, uh, 10 degrees per 12 hours uh, change in potential temperature. Um, in this, at this maximum, that's now at about four to five kilometers. Um, and if we go back, uh, so tw this is 24 to 36, 36 to 48, we have clear mid-level and upper-level tendency maximums. And then 48 to 60, again, concentrated mid-level warming of potential temperature, and then upper-level 
peaked at about 14 kilometers. And the tendency uh, and the eye is, is, is relatively weak. Um, and actually, and this is potential temperature, so if you looked at the temperature change in the, in the eye wall, sometimes you actually have uh, a cooling in the eye wall, uh, even if you have a warming in potential temperature. Um, if we look at the, the budget terms, again, the total eviction uh, is largely responsible for the changes in potential temperature in the eye. You have an upper level maximum in the effective tendency and a mid-level maximum in the effective tendency. The, the colors are, are saturated here, but at the edge of the eye wall, um, you have a balance between uh, very strong diabetic cooling from evaporation um, and, and some melting from, from precipitation that's falling into the, the subsaturated eye. Um, and that's, that's offset by warming from, from mean vertical advection. Um, you have very strong um, descending motion at the edge of the eye wall at this time. And uh, there's also horizontal diffusion now becomes a leading order term at the outer edge of the eye or the, the inner edge of the eye wall. So in that region, um, it's, uh, it's no longer negligible um, and it's important for the, the budget of the, of, of the outer eye. But still to, near the center of the storm where the strongest warming is, the horizontal diffusion is still um, not an important term in the budget. Uh, once again, the, the PBL scheme, it's very important to the boundary layer itself, but um, has a negligible tendency uh, everywhere in the free atmosphere in the eye. Um, the, um, at this time, uh, the, the mean vertical advection is largely responsible for most of the warming of the eye. There's some contribution um, at low levels, actually, from the eddy radial advection here in the, in the eye. Um, but this mid-level maximum, where, where the strongest warming is in the, in the potential temperature field, is, is now at this time um, uh, mainly uh, due to the strong subsidence um, uh, leading to warming from vertical advection at potential temperature. And you have the, a minimum in the vertical advective tendency above that, and then you have this secondary maximum at upper levels that's responsible for the, the large warming the large change in potential temperature um, near the tropopause. Um, yes, and again, mean radial evection is, is relative is small. Um, it becomes larger at the edge of the eye wall now, but it's still um, relatively small compared to the other terms. So um, the, to summarize the budget, um, the, the question we were asking is why is the warm core maximized at mid-levels in this simulation and in other simulations that I've looked at? And it's that during the period of rapid intensification, um, that's going to be the period of, of rapid warming. And this rapid warming is concentrated at mid-levels at about five to seven kilometers. There's persistent warming at five to seven kilometers. So at all these times, there's, there's large warming at mid-levels. It, it, the specific height where it's maximized, where the tendency is, is greatest, it varies, uh, it goes up and down from time to time, but overall it's large in this mid-level region, um, whereas sometimes you get a large tendency near the inversion at low levels, but that's not persistent. Uh, the inversion goes up and down, you can get a cooling tendency um, sometimes, and so that doesn't become a persistent center of warming. And so why do we get uh, the warming at five to seven kilometers height, this, this tendency? And um, in this simulation, it's uh, both mean subsidence and eddy radial advection contribute to this warming. Um, and like I said, I don't know how general this is, um, whether the eddy radial advection is, is, is typically important during the development stage or not. I think more studies would be useful to, to confirm that. Um, and as I'll, I'll show um, when we talk again about the plots of mean subsidence, um, the strongest sinking motion in the eye is not at the center, it's at the edge of the eye, um, or the, at the outer edge of the eye, or the inner edge of the eye wall. Um, and this uh, very strong subsidence would on its own lead to large warming of, the, of that region, but that warming doesn't actually occur 
because the tendency from vertical advection is, is entirely cancelled um, by, or, or nearly entirely cancelled mm -hmm. by evaporative cooling and later when the storm becomes stronger by horizontal turbulent diffusion. Just a moment, I, I'm just confusing that. I think the, yeah, evaporation cooling and the horizontal diffusion uh, is existed, but the, I think it's still the, the vertical advection near the edge of uh, eye wall. Yes, it's a, it's a very strong mean vertical advection near the uh, eye wall edge. Yeah. So I think it's not totally cancelled. Yeah, yeah, I should clarify. It's not, it's not totally cancelled, but it's largely cancelled. Mm -hmm. So like these, these tendencies from the diabetic um, the diabetic cooling, mm. this is like uh, off the scale, so it might be 10 or 20 Kelvin per, per 12 hours. Um, and that, and b both of these are off the color bar. Um, so they, they largely cancel each other, and then there's a small residual. Um, so, yeah, so the edge of the eye wall and the eye, there's warming there generally, but you don't see. But you don't see the pattern of mm. of um, of the tendency mm -hmm. um, in the actual warming. You 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 have this narrow zone of, of, of cooling and descent there, mm -hmm. but you don't have any sort of manifestation mm -hmm. of that structure in the actual tendency. Yes. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah. So, but but yes, there's there's still um, mm -hmm. the, the the mean vertical vection is strong enough. Mm -hmm. Um, so that it um, it provides a small um, a positive tendency right along the edge there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does okay. that so make sense? The heating near the edge is cancelled, but the uh, inner side of the edge is uh, uh, that uh, heating. There's and heating. What is mean vertical advection? Yeah. 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 Th there's heating here. Just near the edge uh, it's cancelled but uh, oh, in the side of the edge it's uh, yeah so so that yeah the zone of, mm, of so heated. you have a you have a you have mean vertical advection mm. throughout the like radially throughout the mm. eye mm. but the 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 region of, of of diabetic cooling is narrow because that's driven by precipitation mm -hmm. which is only which is falling out of the eye wall mm. um, and is only in that re narrow region mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, inwards of that of that region of rainfall, mm. you have no offsetting diabetic so cooling, the and area so area you, then you get and then you get warming. Limited in the very small region, in just near the eye wall edge. The diabetic cooling. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Mm. Okay. So, so you, you show the leading term for the heating in the lower level is eddy radial mm. uh, radial advection. I, I want to know the heat source of the uh, uh, radial advection. I imagine that first the uh, descending motion uh, by uh, mean, ad uh, mean vertical advection along the eyeball edge. The most of uh, the heating is cancelled by adiabatic, heat, uh, adiabatic heating. But the radial heat, the heat source is remained along the eyeball edge and that is heat source and transported by eddy radial radio um, friction. Is it correct? I think I think it's difficult to say like what the source is. It's mm -hmm. um, I'm about to show some slides about the eddy radial evection um, that might clarify it, but is anything that could be causing warming locally away from the center <laughs> Then, if you have um, if you have radial motion that's correlated with that, then you can you can bring that warm air into the into the center of the eye. Mm -hmm. But what causes that warming initially? It could be um, it could be from descent, or it might be from um, diabetic heating in mm -hmm. the, in the eye wall. It's it's not. Um, I think further work it would take more analysis to try to figure out where that came from originally. Um, in, in this uh, analysis, uh, mean means a tang tangential mean. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Azimuthal uh, mean, tangential mean. Eddy, eddy means a deviation from the tangential. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I should clarify. Yeah. The, 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 the azimuthal average, 
average around the storm, and the eddies are, are the deviations, <coughs> perturbations from that 